Hi there. Welcome once again to Shorty on the Fly, Beginner's Fly Tying Lessons. And today we will be tying a Snowshoe Quill Gordon Emerger. And I'm using uh, Snowshoe hair for the wing material. And I mentioned this in a, a while back in a previous video uh, that it is a great alternative uh, material to use because it's relatively easy to obtain and not too expensive. Not to mention the fact that it floats like a cork. Uh, I'm also going to introduce you to working with a stripped peacock quill stem uh, and a few little tricks to make that look right. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm using a size 14 clink hammer style hook today and we will be using my trusty old Olive 60 Danville for thread. So we're going to go ahead and get the thread started on the hook in the usual fashion right behind the eye and take wraps to just where we begin to turn the bend. We're not putting a wing in up front today. That goes in uh, next to last, actually. And then for a trailing shuck, I'm going to use the uh, Zilon in brown. And we don't need the whole piece and when it comes off of the card like that. I'm gonna strip some out and go with maybe a third of that. Otherwise, it's just a little too bulky and we're trying to create the illusion of a uh, shock rather than a big bulky situation. So I'm gonna lay that in with a pinch wrap, secure it to the top of the hook, and then we're just gonna take wraps right down the hook. And the landing point that I wanna shoot for is a spot right above where the barb would have been. In this case, I'm using a barbless hook, so you kind of have to eyeball it, but that's about where we go. And then I'm going to trim that shuck to be about a hook gap in length. And now we're going to use for our body material, a stripped peacock quill. And I'm using these Polish hand stripped quills. You can also make them yourself uh, and if you want to see a video on that, go visit my buddy Tim Flagler over on Tight Lines, and uh, he's got a great video for how to create these on your own. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and cut just a little bit off and create a, a spot for me to tie that in. And you want to tie it in with the dark, darker stripe, the darker side toward the rear of the hook. I'm just going to lay that right on the side of the hook and I know it looks like it's not going to catch but it really does you catch that little tip that you made and it's going to uh, hang in there just fine now the next step I want to do is I want to create a little bit of a shape to my body otherwise it's just skinny looking and and uh, too frail looking in my opinion so I'm running the, the thread almost up to where the flat part of the hook starts and then I'm going to run it back down to the 75% mark and then back up to where I was before and then back down halfway and then back up 25% back down and then back up okay and that gives me just a little bit of shape to my underbody, which is desirable in this, so it doesn't, you know, look too skinny. Now, in order to make this a little bit more durable, I'm going to put just a touch of super glue on the hook as I go to wrap that uh, quill. Uh, it's going to make it uh, quite a bit more durable. So now we're going to start wrapping up the body with touching turns of that quill situation. And when I get just past the hook point, this is getting kind of thin and difficult to grasp. So I'm gonna come in and grab the rest of it with my hackle pliers in order to take it the rest of the way. And you have to be very delicate. These things will break on you if you pull too hard. So I'm trying not to do that. And then take those wraps right up where we get to that flat part of the hook and then come in and capture it with your thread and now we're going to come in and trim away the rest of that and in order to 
not only make the fly more durable, but also to bring out the colors in the uh, segmentation. I'm gonna come and hit this with a little Sally Hansen's. And when I do, you can see how that's going to bring out the segmentation. And it also makes the fly a little bit more durable. Now certainly, if you have UV resin and a UV torch, you can go ahead and use that. But we're beginners and it's a little pricey situation to utilize uh, sometimes. So this works just as well. You only have to handle one aspect of it a little different. And that is we need to let that dry. So I'm just gonna tie off. And I've got a styrofoam cup which I'm gonna take it off and let it dry. And I already have one going that has dried. And we're gonna go ahead and finish off with that one, okay? So now just get the, the thread started back on the hook, just like you did if you were starting it. Take a couple wraps, get everything situated. And now for my wing, I'm using uh, snowshoe rabbit feet in medium done. And I have split the foot, which makes it a little bit easier to get at the material that I want. And again, if you want to see a video on that, go see my buddy Tim Flagler on Tight Lines. And he's got a great video on how to uh, split that out so you can get at the fur a little bit better. And what we want is this crinkly stuff down by the toe section here. Now, how much you take out is one of those situations that just comes with experience. Um, usually less than you think as as is the case so often and I'm snipping this out off camera here and I'm going to show you what I have so here we have the tuft that I want and that's going to be a pretty good length what I'm going to do is come in and strip out some of the under fur fibers there's not a lot in there and you don't really have to line it up if you have some real wonky uh, looking fibers that are sticking way out you can pull them out but we've got this one pretty good so I'm gonna lay that in coming just beyond the back of the hook here grab it and I'm gonna make a pinch wrap to secure everything right there on the top of the hook and we're good to go and now come in and we're gonna trim the rest of this these butt ends off at an angle get all the excess out of there and then I'm going to cover this up just to give myself a little nicer landing spot for my thorax and a couple wayward ones there give me a trim those out and another one okay we're almost finished and I'm using SLF prism dubbing in light gray. You don't have to use it, you can use whatever you want. Use different colors, and whatever, your, uh, whatever is your pleasure. And I'm taking just a little bit of the dubbing off. Again, it's always not, don't use too much. And we probably have enough there. I've got about a two inch noodle. So I'm gonna wrap that back around, right up to the wing section and then back down and pull everything out of the way. And now we're gonna come in and whip finish it. And there you have it. One regulation snowshoe hair quill Gordon emerger. And this is a great fly. It, it rides low in the surface film uh, and sinks the back, the back edge under the water. Uh, it's an easy, fly to tie and as with so many of the patterns I've been showing you you can make it in any configuration you want you can tie this as a March Brown by using uh, a uh, fawn colored dubbing uh, you can turn it into a an Isonikia by using a mahogany colored dubbing or a buyout or whatever have you but uh, again versatile pattern uh, pretty easy to tie I hope you get out there tie them up get on the water until we meet again, I bid you peace.